Welcome to Backseat Confessions Podcast. Slide into the backseat as we listen to mostly anonymous strangers tell us stories from their lives. I'm a rideshare driver in Atlanta, and the people getting in my car have absolutely no idea I'm going to ask them to share. My commitment to you is to tell at least a snippet of virtually every story recorded in my car in the order they were told to me. My hope is that you laugh, cringe, cry, but mostly connect to these amazing people. You may find a piece of your own story or just feel more connected to the rest of us. Join us, won't you? So, hey, my new friend, this is an adult podcast. Themes and languages are Definitely not suitable for everyone. Listener discretion is advised. What is up, my dudes and dudettes? Today's ride is just fun and interesting. There are no super sad stories, and even the ones with struggle all end up pointing to important life lessons. So, wherever you're at right now in life, I hope you're able to take some time to laugh and learn from these great riders today. Buckle up, amigo, because it's time to take a ride. Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like the title to our first writer story could be, don't knock it until you've tried it. She finds some really, some really good loving from an unusual type of lover. On a technical note, you will hear some popping when I talk and I apologize. I'm guessing the foam protector must have come off my mic. And honestly, I just didn't feel like cleaning it up in post. So here it is in all of its pop and glory. Story number 116. Saturday, January 30th, 2021, 12 19 a.m. Oh, okay, so my story is about this time I went to a festival and yeah. I was supposed to meet this guy afterwards. Okay. And uh basically we're just gonna we're just gonna say that it's like uh you didn't realize you fornicated with a crackhead. He didn't? Uh I didn't. Oh, you didn't. So, uh, <laughs> so we sit there, and this guy, like, you know, made him off a of Tinder, and like, go to meet him and his friends at this hotel room where we're like hanging out, and doing all this stuff. Yeah. Then you know, like, we're drinking, doing some other stuff, all the fun. Yeah. And then like. We started like fornicating, get done. I and love that like, you use the word fornicating, by the way. It's so biblical and old school. Like I know, I love fornicating. It always makes it, it so much better. Yeah, right. But just, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then we sat there, and after we were done, yeah. said guy had like some fun. That I don't know what I can say on here. You can so, say any, no, literally any word, anything you want is totally. Ooh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no yeah. restrictions. So like, you want to do a little, little fun nose time stuff. And so uh-huh. oh, then yeah, yeah. we do that, and okay. I'm just like, why won't you do it with me? And he's like, oh, I have a deviated septum. And I'm like, what? So then he proceeds to, like, put it in this pipe oh. and, like, oh. light it. Oh. This dude was a pro. That's what I said. And I was like, I feel like that's crack. <laughs> and he was just like, no, no, no. I just have, like, a deviated septum. So, like, I can't uh. do it the normal way. And I was like, but I think that's crack. Uh. <laughs> and then I was just like. Um, I think someone's calling me. Like, I definitely oh, have to go home. I have to return snap. back. 
So, okay. So, up until this moment, mm-hmm. was was the sex and the time together pretty good? Like It was. He was very thorough, very in there. And I get why. He was um, on crack. <laughs> he was so, on crack. <laughs> I love it. So, so crackheads can be okay lovers. I, yes, I, they I will, just I had to check. I, they will yeah. get in there and be very and, thorough and, and, and very loving. Stuff. He was very all about me. Oh, that's I really was like, sweet. That's really sweet. You're like getting in there, loving it. Yeah. Like you don't care. He right? Was just no, like, he's, I don't care. He, yeah, he just like, wants you to do. Yeah, he had that energy. Yeah. Of a million people. Of course he did. Yeah. He was on crack. <laughs> Oh my god, that is the funniest thing ever. So this is like in the whole world of should you have a crackhead lover, you right. can give the pros and cons. You I can. I did realize I could. I didn't think I ever would. Right, yeah, not wasn't on your bucket list. Yeah, I was like maybe if I stop by like a trap house or something, <laughs> that possibly might happen. But like, you know, I just go to regular nice four star hotels and you can get loved by a crackhead. I, you know what? I feel like there's a bumper <laughs> sticker or a meme or some inspiring slogan somewhere. I should probably make one. I, I really should. So. Yeah. I should make one. Get a four-star hotel and get loved well by a crackhead. There's right, that, a crackhead, that is inspiration. And they won't even, you know, worry about themselves. No. Because he didn't. He was just like, this is all you. Oh, my God. And, you know. And so, and so, like, so, of course, you know, I, I totally get it. You're like, you're out of there. Did mm-hmm. you ever have that moment later where you're like... Oh man, I should have like hung around. I should have gone another date. Or were you pretty happy with your decision of like, no, I needed it was it was, it was fun while it lasted. No, I had to go. yeah, I was yeah. like, we gotta go because somewhere it. down the line, I don't want to explain the crackheadedness. Yeah, yeah. To the for anyone else, that's now fair. I'm gonna be going along with the deviated septum, <laughs> right. and now I'm lying to myself <laughs> right. and him. This is it. That was already bad. I, was I like, love. I get it. Maybe I could have, you know, Amy Winehouse and them. They had perfect lovers that were drug addicts. Yeah. But yeah. like I don't, uh-uh. yeah. I don't sing, so I don't think it would have benefited me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you are a delight, and you've just made my night that much better, Miss B. You thank you it. so much for sharing <laughs> and for making me laugh, and I hope yes. somebody else gets uh, uh, just like. I hope somebody just drives off the road laughing. Not nobody gets hurt. But yes, just, no one gets hurt. No one gets no hurt, one but gets just hurt. like has a good time. So thank I you do. for sharing. I hope they love it. Yes, <laughs> you've definitely brought joy to me, and I, I'm sure to many others are oh going to hear this. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Oh uh, well, you're perfect. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OMG. First of all, what a fantastic story. I mean, who would think that crackheads make for selfless lovers? I've never heard of such a thing, but again, don't knock it until you try it, right? Mostly though, I just love her joyful and warm personality. She's one of the most fun and enjoyable riders I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Our second rider today is one of the rare instances where I got to give the same person a ride more than once. There are a handful of those, but obviously it's unusual. A couple of times they just happened to come through a rideshare app, but for a select few people, I gave them my number so they could reach out to me directly for a ride because I wanted to get a story from them and we weren't able to get that on the first time around. This is one of those cases where she kept my number and I picked her up and got this story. I loved getting to hear from her because it took me behind the curtains into a world that I just don't know a lot about. Story number 117, Saturday, January 30th, 2021, 2.59 a.m. Oh my goodness, so the last time you see me, it was nothing but good vibes. I get in there, my my friends started making it rain on me, and all of a sudden, this waitress from New York comes to, comes in my section. Okay. 
and makes the dude throw money on her while my money's on the floor. Okay. When I tell you, I said, okay, well, I was like, how much you throw her? He said, $100. I said, okay, I'm going to take $100 off. Do you know what my boss said? Oh, I need to stop acting broke and just split the money with her. Excuse me? <laughs> like, oh. What do you mean? So we're supposed to split the bag. You know, we have sweepers to pick up the money. So Okay, um, and, and for, for the uh, podcast audience who probably has no idea what we're talking about. Okay, so, a sweeper is somebody that hold sweeps on, Hold on, hold on. What, what, what do you do for a living, love? I'm a dancer. Okay, you're a dancer. Okay, and so... And by the way, when when you explained the rules of this last time, I was so it was like a whole new world to me. I had no idea. Yeah. So you, <laughs> yeah, you. Don't, so as a as a dancer, you don't just get to keep the money. No, we get to keep all the money, but we pay up front. Like okay. it depends, like seventy five to like one fifty to two hundred, depending on the event just or who's dance. there. Yes. Okay, and that's so that's almost like a for you. That's almost like a, a door fee. Yes. And then. But didn't you tell me that basically as part of this whole thing that like there is a percentage of what you're getting um, from the patrons, you're splitting with the house as well, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, certain nights, yes. We split the money. Okay. But um, it hasn't been like that lately because okay. there hasn't been that many girls. That they know it's wrong okay. to get us like that. Now, if yeah. it's over like probably 10 to 15 girls, then, then we'll probably like have to bust it down with the club or whatever. Okay. Like, but yeah, with that situation, um, I didn't mind splitting the money with her when I really realized, you know what I mean? Like she brung the people from New York cause New York's closed because right. of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't right because you're not a dancer. Like I paid to get in here. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm like, I looked at my boss like, dang, you're supposed to be on my side. Like I right. understand these is your, your people from your hometown or whatever. Right. And you're trying to make sure they eat or whatever, but that's not. Yeah. That's not cool. You know what I mean? Right. Because she ended up running off with the whole bag. <gasps> My bag and her and her hundred dollars that she had in the bag. So that's oh. like probably four four fifty. Oh gosh. Yes. Like I was I was sick. Like oh. I didn't even go to work the next day because Did you I, tell this to your mind, boss? Yeah. My boss looked at me like I was crazy. He was drunk, so oh. you know. He didn't he didn't really care. Wow. He was like, Go talk to the dude that collects the money. Well guess what? I don't want you guys picking up my money no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put it in my leg warmer. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Oh my it's the leg warmer for me. <laughs> yep. So it's like you think that they have your back, but it's like they're more protective over the waitresses than us. You know Are what I mean? They? Because okay. they're just collecting our money, and these girls like work for them every day. Sure. We only work for them for like one or two days. I got you, because you're so, almost more like an independent contractor. Yeah, that yeah, way. And that's, yeah. Like, that's what I am. Yeah, like, I don't sure. understand like why they get over on people like that or whatever but you know they see how much money we're making and they just take advantage of it mm. so you know it is what it is but i humbled myself i didn't go to work the next the next day right and i was mad but like i had to calm down you know what yeah. i mean like you don't just take a loss like that and just like let it go you know <laughs> right like 450 yeah, <laughs> like a regular person would kill you for that <laughs> right <laughs> like, yeah that's a lot of I money i just took a day off you know what i mean enjoyed myself yeah. Drink some wine or whatever, and then went to another club just so I wouldn't have to think about that. Gotcha. But yeah. I might end up running to her right now. You really? Know what I mean? And I don't know what you're gonna do. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's why as soon as I walk in the door, I might get a drink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I walk in the door. <laughs> right. You know, so I won't think about it because my yeah. friend was like, "Is it worth?" You know, jeopardizing your job. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, it's really not. He was like, you no. already made double that. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, don't do that. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just the principle. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Like, I said that, like, we were supposed to bust the bag down, like, but meaning busting, like, we we're supposed to split it in half. Right. And that wasn't the case. She ran off with the whole bag. Like, how did you guys let her leave early without splitting the bag with me? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I never, I've never seen that before. Wow. Wow. And then the, the, the dude that collects our money, he's like, oh, yeah, I was wondering why she was trying to get the hell out of here so fast. I'm <laughs> like, what? Uh -huh. So you didn't bother to come get me. You was right there when you picked up my money with her. So you knew that we had to bust that bag down together. So why would you let her take a whole bag by herself? Mm. I don't understand that. No, like, not good. Yeah. Well, I will say you always seem to keep uh like a positive upbeat attitude yes you have to in uh, this yeah. society like yeah. it's a different world like yeah. you ever seen like masons and stuff like that they don't allow certain people to come around yeah that's basically like me with dancing like i don't like to dance with everybody you know what mm. i mean like they don't have the same vibe i have like their energy is like dead like a man could throw a thousand dollars and they're like oh i'm ready to 
can we can we go? I'm ready to pick up the money mm. with me. I want to see this guy again, and when he sees me again, I want him to throw that another thousand dollars on me. Right. She doesn't care. Uh, I, I care. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I want I want somebody like like to every time they come in town, they want to call me. Right. And say oh, I'm at your club. I'm here for you. Wow. That's that's what I'm on. Like the yeah. girls that I work with, they're not on the same agenda I am. So that's why they get mad at me. Like when I make all the money, they like they don't understand. I, I'm just so humble. Like I mm. wait till the people are ready to spend money on me. Wow. Like I'm not forcing them. Like, oh, you ready yeah. to dance right now? Right, 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 <laughs> like, right, right, right. It's just like I don't want to be a bully towards the customers. Like, cause it's like it's not like how it was like back in the day. Like with strippers, they could just walk up to the man and be like, "Do you want to dance?" And he says like, "Yes or no." Right. But now, like, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Right. The man automatically says no. Like, if you just walk up to him and say, oh, yeah, you want to dance? You want to ask him his name or nothing? Oh, yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's why I said they still have that mentality. And a lot of girls I dance with, their mothers used to dance. Oh. So, so they had the mentality of their mother, or what their mother used to do. Wow. The, 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 that was back in the day, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that was back in the day. So, <laughs> you like, you're, you're, you treat it like a professional. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because I already don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just, there's so many spirits in there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you hear a church, you say the devil's in a strip club. Right. He literally is. Wow. So, <laughs> I wow, seen it is... for myself one night, like, when I was sober. Really? I decided to see, like, how it would be if I didn't drink no alcohol dancing. Yeah. It's the worst. Really? Yeah, you cannot be sober. Okay, so tell me, like, what was your experience the night you stayed sober? Oh, my God. I've seen so much stuff, like... Okay, when you say you're prostitution, seen prostitution, okay, wow, <laughs> like, really, yeah, wow, girls rubbing men's, you know, private parts. I yeah. was like, oh, <laughs> it's like it's a lot I'm seeing right now. You know, when you're drunk, you're not paying attention to nobody, oh. but when you're sober, you're just sitting there. You know, I made right. I made money though. Right, I made a lot of money. Sure, because I was so focused. But yep. I no, I would never do that again. Really? Yeah. And then, like, you know, with the women bumping into you or, you know, trying to step on your money when you're sober, you'll think about it and you'll want to snap. Uh, but when you're drunk, you'll laugh. You'll laugh at them. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. still going to get paid. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't you can't block my blessing. So. Wow. And you said you said um, that you also were, like, picking up on sort of the, the spiritual side of things? Yes. Okay, so like, how do you? How does that work for you? Is that something you sense and feel, or do yes, you, um, okay. like I might go up to a man and sit with him, and if his energy is wrong, I won't dance for him. Okay, so okay, and, and even even when you're drunk, you're, yeah, you're even still, when I'm drunk, like okay. I make sure that I don't go to nobody that's gonna ruin my night. Yeah, okay, you know what I mean? Because yep. this girl that I used to dance with, she knocked the man out the wheelchair. What? He owed her three hundred dollars. She knocked him out the wheelchair. Oh. And ran in his pockets and got her money out. Oh my! And then God. he called the police on her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not good. So I've seen from experience what other girls go through. Yeah. To get their money, like I don't want to have to like beat you up. Yeah. To get my money, like I'm not doing that. So yeah. on our last ride, uh, I talked to you about like like I just I, I want you to get with a financial advisor because I mean you make enough money to where if you were smart with it, like you could really really set yourself up and i know not a lot of people that are or dancers do that but i would you're so bright and um anyways just love to see all that but like so you're saying that you have to stay a little bit drunk just so that you don't notice all the stuff and there's you got the spiritual stuff going on um i mean i get that it's good money how how are you able to just keep doing the job you're doing stay as professional as you do when you're saying you really don't enjoy it. At the I end love it. to dress up. Like, okay. you see, last time I had a different wig on. Yeah. Now I'm short. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's just fun for me to look like a different person every day. You know? Like, every other week, I might change my wig. But sometimes, like, if so many girls are watching me, yeah. I will change my wig in three days. Okay, okay. Because I'm drawing too much attention. Okay. That's why I always, like, get, like hair that's like low key so mm. like if, you, if dudes throwing them so much money on me you can't see me all you see is the money going up the air but mm. like I, my hair was yellow yeah, yeah yeah when i tell you everybody in the club seen me and they seen every customer that i had because i had the yellow hair mm. never again will i ever go that bright okay okay <laughs> but but my question was is like you're you're saying you don't really enjoy that atmosphere that, mm -hmm. that place like 
are you literally just staying there for the money or yes or the you, money's good like okay, when i yeah. tell you so many people are so loyal to me yeah yeah like and i don't have sex with them right. i'm like a counselor for them yeah or they just miss me because i dance in miami so it's like when we coming back home yeah they get excited they like man i miss you like yeah these girls ain't talking about nothing <laughs> like right they're boring they two-stepping me and i'm yeah. like two-stepping you <laughs> it's like oh yeah like you're in a church choir i was like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that's funny yeah so okay yeah um so i guess for you you're you're able to um even though the environment is toxic in so many ways there's parts of it that you really enjoy um including dressing up and then obviously um just changing people's lives you know what i mean like you like that's why i be trying to tell like a lot of people like you don't know why somebody came to the strip club yeah you know what i mean like yeah. i met a guy that used to work at a radio station they said he only had six months to live oh wow he's still living wow you know what I mean? Yeah. Because. So okay, they, hold on. I, I so maybe I misheard you then. You you were saying earlier just about like the spirits and yeah, sort of like also, okay, like for example, like. But here, well, here's my question real quick though. Mm -hmm. So okay, so you, so like half of what you're what you were saying before makes me feel like you're not, uh, like it like it's not your favorite place to be. But then in the other hand, it sounds like there's some. Like you're connecting with people on a very human level and and all that stuff. So like. On balance, do you feel like you do enjoy what you do or you don't? I enjoy it with the customers, but with the dancers, I hate it. Okay, so it's, it's the other dancers. They make it the worst. That's okay, why I get okay. ready at home. Mm. Because, you know, just in the dressing room, like yeah. while you're getting ready, yeah. somebody can bring your spirit down so fast. I gotcha. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't have a backbone. That's why I try to tell people, like, yeah, it's all fun. You see me make a whole bunch of bricks, like make a couple of thousand or whatever, and it just looks lit. But just imagine what I went through. Right, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. it's girls that, you know, has they have pimps. Oh, wow. They have men that convince them to give them money all the time. So yeah. I'm going against them, and they have kids. I wow. don't have neither of these <laughs> <Right>. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they feel like I should back down because they're struggling. Uh, no, that's your choice. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I, I don't have no sympathy on them. Yeah. Because you had a choice just like I had a choice. Yeah. And you chose to go, like, some girls, like, just really come to work to get high. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, drugs. And, and then some are alcoholics. Like, I know this one girl, she, she used to come to work at, like, 1130 in the afternoon mm. and be drunk already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Before we even, like, put our clothes on. Right, right. I'm yeah. like, oh, this is just too much for me. Right, right. <laughs> I can't do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, day shift is different from night shift. Is it like yes? Like you, I meet a lot of lawyers and doctors, but nighttime it's like a whole different crowd. Is like it you, okay? Yeah, yeah. you got to be prepared for it. That's why you always need to be there early mm -hmm. so you can see where you're gonna move at. Like I just move different. That's why I said I only dance like with ten to fifteen men. Okay, out of the whole club. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most girls dance with the whole club. Uh, I'm not doing that. I, you don't give me five dollars. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I'm not taking $5. You, I'm sorry. You are a pro. You yes. are absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like I said, I don't want to be there. So why waste my time and not make no money? What is mm -hmm. the point of me going? Right. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, is it is it in here? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much, Miss K. Thank you. I enjoyed this. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you sharing. It's uh, a whole different world than yes anything you, i know you'll, much you'll about. hear about the new story tonight <laughs> <laughs> all right yes thank you so. you bet thank you so. so a couple things to note atlanta is known among many other things of course for its strip clubs and it is a big part of the culture here. I've just never really been much of a fan myself. I was raised in a conservative Christian environment growing up, so of course strip clubs were a big no-no. Then, when I was older and going through my wild years in my 30s, where I wanted to try all the things that I couldn't do when I was younger, I ended up figuring out 
that I just didn't really enjoy strip clubs like some other guys did. But back to Miss K here. I think one of my big aha moments was I realized at some point during our conversation that she was an independent contractor just like me. I've spent a good chunk of my adult working life as an independent contractor. And it was really interesting to see that although the context in which we both earn a living was different, some of our struggles were really the same. And her understanding of human nature and of how to be a professional with people could be a clinic on how to succeed in sales and business in any arena. I've mentioned before in season one that the way I put together an episode is that I start with the first story and build out what I'm going to say before and after it, then I move to the next story and repeat the process. This ensures that I'm essentially discovering, along with you, the listener, what the next story is. Anyways, I'm enjoying the thread this episode has so far around sexuality, or at least sexuality-adjacent topics. And just for the record, I did not pick this next guy up at the same strip club or even close by to where I had dropped off our previous writer, Miss K. Story number 118. Saturday, January 30th, 2021, 3.32 a.m. Uh, well, first and foremost, let me say thank you for inviting me to be a part of the Backseat Confessions podcast. Oh, man, thank you. Uh, that's, that's really beautiful. I appreciate you uh, you saying that. Uh, thank you. This is quite an interesting experience. Um, but I guess the story that I would like to, to tell tonight uh, actually pertains to my job. Okay. Um, as we discussed just a moment ago, my job, I do work in one of Atlanta's many, many adult entertainment clubs, yes. strip clubs. Uh-huh. Um, I guess I would like to, to tell a story about that. I love it. And, and uh, what what specifically do you do in, in the club? What, what's your sort of role? Oh, just as the anonymous name suggests, I actually work in the kitchen. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And, and we were commenting, or I was commenting, um, I'm not a strip club guy, so I can't verify this, uh, but I've heard that some of the best food in Atlanta is in the strip club. So uh, you would... <laughs> We were, t- we were laughing about it because it's like, normally it's like, oh man, don't ever touch the food in a strip club. But in Atlanta, not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I'm sorry. So so what, what what's the, what's your story tonight? Um, I think, like I said, I would like to definitely touch on the, the whole strip club angle. Okay. Um, really just to try to break some common misconceptions about what people really expect when they come into one of those types of establishments. I've uh, been able to... First and foremost, virtually all nightclubs, strip clubs, those types of things, gentlemen clubs. Yeah. Uh, they're actually owned usually by some sort of parent company. Okay. One parent company may own five, six, seven, eight different clubs. Right. They might be just regular bars. Okay. Um, maybe sports bars. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, they're a couple that own strip clubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, more so specifically about not only what I do, but what I've seen, I do work in the kitchen. That's usually separate from the actual showroom, which is where all the action happens. But uh, actually getting to work in there, uh, I get the jump on all the the juicy details and the scoops and everything like that. Oh, yeah. One thing that I would like to say is that that's definitely an establishment where like actors, athletes, uh, musicians, Mm. they definitely like to frequent. But, uh, Surprisingly, quite a few politicians that also go in there. Okay, yeah. And uh, this is where I'm actually kind of glad that this is anonymous, even though obviously no names. Yep. Uh, some of these politicians, they're not in office anymore. Okay. But uh, with different types of establishments, not the one where you pick me up from, but there was one named Follies. Uh, what was it called? Follies. F O L L I E S. Yeah. Uh, it's shut down right now. Okay. They gotcha. had a 
undercover operation they had like over a dozen plainclothes detectives go in there oh. and they busted a very large prostitution ring oh my goodness okay. um long story short they lost their business license they're not going to be able to open back up Ooh. the owner literally is going to sell the building they're going to change the name of it and open back up as a different strip club okay sometime later this year so don't worry all the uh <laughs> the club patrons of atlanta one of your favorite spots will be open back soon but uh honestly the stuff that goes on in there goes on in all clubs doesn't matter how how illustrious it may seem oh, wow. um, everybody partakes wow it's an yeah. industry of vice yeah closed doors very few cameras okay um, and everybody gets a heads up if the police pull up on the lot yeah so wow people feel safe to come in there and and do certain things um, yeah uh, VIP booths, closable doors, those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, beautiful women, yep. alcohol, drugs. Yeah. You don't need to be a rock star to live that lifestyle. Right. Yeah. And it's definitely from what you're painting, it's a, it's a, the perfect cocktail for vice and and uh, and, and trouble. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, most of the individuals that work there, they are professionals. You know, your doormen, yeah. your floormen, security bartenders. They all work to make sure that no small group of individuals really comes in and ruins it for everybody. Sure. So if you can party so long as you're not partying too hard, by all means, come on in and uh, enjoy yourself. There's yeah. there's honestly something for everybody in there. Yeah. Uh, but also at the same time, I would like to break another common misconception that we were talking about earlier. Really not that dirty. We can't afford to be dirty. Wow. Um, wow. We get consistently higher health inspection scores for the kitchen than uh, most three-star restaurants in the city. Wow. We get higher scores than the Southern Art. We get higher scores than Ruth Chris's. Really? Yes. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We, we literally, they come in, most establishments in the city, if they have to get a health inspection or eco shore to come in, mm -hmm. they might get visited once or twice a year. Yeah. Well, we get visited every month. Wow. If wow. we get lower than an A, we get a week to clean it up. If they come back and it's not fixed, we get a citation. If they come back and it's not fixed, the kitchen gets shut down. In, and I'm assuming that's because you are a strip club. There's like extra scrutiny. Yes, that's exactly why. Okay. That is the exact reason. So, so like in a weird way, uh, this is obviously just occurring to me now, but in a weird way, because of this extra scrutiny, if I want really good clean food, I probably should be frequenting strip clubs for my food. I mean, if I'm looking, if I'm, if my big concern, which it personally mm -hmm. isn't, but if my big concern is a really clean kitchen, I'm going to, I'm going to bet there's a higher chance that you have a clean kitchen than me. Uh, that what it's a weird bet to make, but yeah. it honestly is the safe bet. And this is information that can be looked up. Um, right. Right. The, the city has all this information. If you ever walk into an establishment yeah. and just wanted to ask the questions, even though we do keep that paperwork in the back of the house, we do have to show it to people if they request it. We're not ashamed of it. Like yeah. I said, yeah. Um, for the almost three years now that I've been working for the company that owns some of these clubs, yeah, um, we've never had anything lower than I would say a 86. Okay. Um, that does actually, at least to me, that sounds bad. I do work in a kitchen, right? Um, but like I said, they'll there there are a bit extra scrupulous. Mm -hmm. um, we've had health inspectors tell us to our face, you know, you should walk out of here with a perfect score, but we can't let y'all have that. Wow. Yeah, so we have to take a point off or something. Oh and they'll God. take it off for the most menial things. Yeah. Um, this go around, because this go around, we got a 96 when the health inspectors came in a couple of weeks ago. They'll yeah. probably be back next week. But um, they took the points off because we used the wrong types of thermometers oh. for our freezer. Mm. When last year they updated all the policies and everything like that and that was the exact specific brand wow. that it says in the paperwork wow. for the health inspectors for the entire county of Fulton. Wow. But so like they're I just said, messing with you. You just can't let us, you know, it just you can't be a perfect score. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so before um, before we end this, um, in the last let's say year or so, any particularly I don't know, just interesting, unique, funny, odd story that just pops to your mind. In the past year or so? Yeah. If I got a minute or two to droll off on some rather interesting things. Yeah. We had multiple Hawks players come in early January of last year and get into a fist fight. 
Love we it. had a couple of Falcons players earlier last year come in and have a fist fight. <laughs> we had a couple of musicians. They didn't get into a fist fight. However, they did get into a shouting match from across the club. Okay. Because one guy was like just spending such a scrupulous amount of money yeah. that it literally covered the entire carpet. You couldn't see the carpet. It was just covered in assorted bills. Oh my and all the girls were obviously flocking to that VIP right. section. Right. And the other artist, uh, he and his group, they didn't appreciate that. Right. So <laughs> things, it, it, like I said, it was almost explicitly verbal. Right. But okay. that's because, you know, the security and the floorman, they kept it that way. They kept it that way, yeah. Smart. Um, we've had multiple music videos okay. shot in there oh cool um they'll usually shut the club down for that but we've also had movies and tv shows nice shoot scenes in the specific club that you picked me up from wow um wow, wow. boomerang on bet the show holly berry produced yeah um superfly it was right? a movie that came out a couple yeah. years yeah, ago of course. yeah um other programs and things like that on bet nice. but um it, it's really never too too boring a thing um yeah. obviously because of the pandemic for about three months yeah from march to june okay we were shut down oh but after it opened back up we experienced a boom in business that they haven't really had in like over a decade are so you serious it was literally so busy wow. that multiple times we would run out of ones fives and tens that is nuts mm -hmm. we would sell out of food we would sell out of liquor and all this is operating on 35 percent max capacity wow. and here's an extra part where i'm glad that this is anonymous yeah we never followed that max capacity policy <laughs> right, yeah. it's a club yeah right, you course. have to in order to make that money yep because our taxes and bills not only for the the facility in the building that I work for, yeah. but just for all the other buildings in general. Oh yeah. It's so expensive. Oh. And then we're talking about one of the biggest sources of cash yeah. in the city. Absolutely. You know, on yeah. any given night, tonight's a Friday and it was a pretty busy night. Yeah. There may have been over two hundred thousand dollars that may have flowed through that building tonight. At wow. least that has made wow. its way into the safe and has been exchanged out. Wow, that's mm -hmm. nuts. Yeah, I will say, um, as a rideshare driver, I've been noticing that some Friday nights, of course, you know, like the, all the Buckhead bars are packed oh, and yeah. all the bars oh, are yeah. packed. But, like, okay, so, like, right now, as of right now, my car says it's 31 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So, my guess is those areas are pretty light tonight. No. But no, absolutely not. There's really? nothing. There's nothing that will stop people from going out except wet. It only gets slow when it okay. rains, All right. even I'm, when it snows. But but like, okay, so earlier tonight, mm -hmm. it, uh, it looked slow. And then last night when I was running on Thursday, uh, it was, it was, there was nothing going on in Buckhead. I mean, nothing. Uh, but, 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 oh, Buckhead. Buckhead, I said, yes. But what I'm saying is the strip clubs are mm -hmm. packed. Yes. They're like, so that was yes. my point is like, oh, my, my apologies. Right, right, yeah, no, no problem. But yeah, the Buckhead bars, really, it does depend on the weather because everybody's going to get out and walk and the girls want to wear, you know, oh, next yeah, to nothing. Oh, yeah, they do bar hop. Right, that's right. That's yeah, a right. good point. Right, but the strip clubs are just, they're banging. And just, oh, and so yeah. to your, to your point, I did not realize, of course, that it's um, this is actually one of the better seasons that strip clubs have had in a long time. But mm -hmm. uh, it's so interesting. So, like, and I know you're you're not necessarily an expert, but it's just your opinion on it. But why do you think that over the last ten years now? you know in the middle of pandemic why do you think it's exploding like what's what's the rationale there um this is actually something that working in there i've discussed with multiple of my co-workers like the, yeah. like half the building um and from basically what i've heard from them it boils down to a few things one what really started it off at first was the fact that everybody got their $1,200 stimulus check uh, and then a week later we opened back up. Uh, right, okay. And so people have literally just been coming in there throwing that good free government money. <laughs> good government cheese at mm -hmm. the girls. I love it. Okay. However, that, that wouldn't explain why literally since January 
we've been busting numbers. Another reason is probably because now with the music industry, yeah. there's been an influx of like artists and stuff from yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. And even the club that you picked me up from, that club has been mentioned in more than just a couple songs. Okay. Uh, Future, Gunner, Young Thug, they've all mentioned it in their songs. They've all been in there. Yeah. OG Mako's been in there. Wow. Um, like it, it, quite a few, yeah. and not just rappers, R&B uh, okay. artists as well. Wow. Trippy Red's been in there a couple of times. Um, Mulatto's been in there. She's a, a prime prominent Atlanta um, uh, rapper slash uh, artist. Okay. Um, and and people have always liked what's cool. Yeah. yeah. And so the strip club kind of calmed down uh, for the past couple of years. And now that it's being talked about more and more so in music, ah. especially with rappers like Blueface and Baby and everything it, like that. And it, was this like an intentional marketing move on the part of the owners of the strip clubs? Or is this just like, hey, this is just what people are singing about and it's just sort of happening and you guys are the lucky beneficiaries? I I wouldn't be surprised if it was the former, okay. but from what I've at least seen in there, yeah. there have been some individuals like uh, some of my building managers, they've been working in that club and for the company yeah. uh, some of them for a couple decades now yeah. one of my building managers she started off as an adult video actress okay yep and then she started as a dancer in the clubs as well she was also doing that on the side and now she literally runs like three of them she, she literally earlier today she brought in four Publix bags those green reusable bags of course stacked with 20s good lord a hundred thousand oh dollars I now gosh. know what a hundred thousand dollars in 20s <laughs> looks like it's a lot that's, that's a lot it's it's so much paper right Ugh, yeah it's yeah. The, i can see why people like hundreds right because yeah, right. anything smaller any large amount of money it's it's just not feasible right yeah not practical but um apparently they they're it'll always fluctuate like that okay all right. every seven to eight years right. there's always a, a cycle where it Got dips it. and then it explodes and Got then it. it goes back to slowing down interesting and it just so happens that the past year or so we're on the up cycle the upside of it can oh that is so fascinating gosh well um i know i need to, let, need to let you out this has been absolutely fascinating thank you so much for sharing my man i appreciate it not a problem sir once again thank you so much for having me on yeah, um, and, I, and I appreciate your candor and kind of like peeling back the curtain a little bit for those of us who are not as familiar with that world. Oh, yeah, and I wasn't familiar with it myself. Just the last thing before I uh, hop yeah. on out. I wasn't familiar with it myself. Fun fact, my mom was actually the one who recommended me because wow. I've always been a chef. Okay, so yeah. So I've always supported myself with cooking. Right. She recommended to me to go and start looking into those types of establishments because I'm also a college student. Yep. And oh, okay. so the daytime isn't always feasible. So uh, I've always been looking for the third shift, night shift. Right, right. And she was like, you know, those strip clubs, they they sometimes have nice food. And I was like, mom, no one eats in a strip club. Like they don't they don't sell food in there. <laughs> right. And she was like, yes, they do. Go to Magic City and apply. Yeah. And even though I applied for Magic City, yeah. I didn't get the job there, but mm -hmm. I got transferred over to another location. And a couple weeks after that, when they trained me there, they put me right to the spot where you picked me up from tonight. And nice. I've been there, like I said, for almost three years, but had no idea wow. that stuff like that even existed. Wow. I love it. I love it. It's fantastic. So thanks, Mom. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Mother knows best. Appreciate you, my man. <laughs> three years later, this is like the longest job I've ever actually held. So, yeah, Mom does know best. <laughs> I love it. I just find the inside workings of any industry from a business standpoint to be interesting. And strip club and nightlife space is even more fascinating in many ways. Off mic, Chef here told me about seeing people in the highest public offices meeting to do business in the club as well as prominent business and public figures. So, so interesting. So there are a lot of people out there that believe if you just make your intentions known, the universe will help you manifest your desires. And this next short story is a pretty good case in point of shouting out your intentions and having them met. 
Story number 119. Monday, February 1st, 2021, 8.24 p.m. Uh, I lived in Austin, Texas for a little bit. Love Austin. Uh, like six years. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm kind of a pothead. That's a, that's a thing of mine. So right. I uh, had always had weed. That was something that I, I just you know, didn't even really think about every day. Well, one particular night I couldn't find my stash. So I, you know, I went to the bar and I had some drinks with people and I got a little drunk. And uh, I I don't know if you're familiar with the drag in Austin. It's the road right in front of UT. They got little shops and stuff like that, but the whole campus is right there. Yep. And it's, you know, it's a major road. And I literally walked up and down it for maybe a half hour, just screaming at the top of my lungs, I need weed. I need weed. And then finally, uh, this guy at the bus stop just goes, hey, hop on the bus with me. And, you know, then I got it. It worked out. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it was just a little story. That's great. (laughs) Were you even going in the right direction or anything? I I just walked up and down the street. No, no, I'm saying once you got on the bus, was the bus going like anywhere? Oh, no, I had no idea where I was going. Yeah, I just, (laughs) I think I just did the full loop till I hopped back off. But, yeah, some college kid. I hopped on. He's like, "What you need?" <laughs> and I probably amazing. got like an eighth or something. That is amazing. <laughs> By the way, you have. Uh, it didn't hit me until you said, you know, that you're a little bit of a pothead. But you sound a little bit like Seth Rogen, oh, who of really? course is like one of the most famous <laughs> potheads ever. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you got a little bit of that Seth Rogen thing going on. But uh, yeah, man, thanks so much for sharing your story. Absolutely, absolutely. Take care. Cracks me up that this dude was just going for it. Also happy he wasn't snatched up by the popo, though, as he was literally shouting out his weed need. Good stuff. last writer was one of those guys that just left a deep impression on me. I could tell he was wise and also compassionate, especially towards people of color who were creatives but didn't understand the business side of the industry. Story number 120. Monday, February 1st, 2021, 11.56 p.m. story and backseat confessions is I've been in the music entertainment industry for a long long time yes sir and you asked me earlier is there anything I'm embarrassed about well <laughs> let me just say this okay being in the entertainment industry f- for a long time yes sir I've have sold 21.6 million albums two diamond awards 26 billboard awards co-produced BT com review but I was still broke Wow and it really hurt me that we don't own distribution rights. Yeah. And I found this out in the back seat, actually, in a in a car, and at a taxi. Okay. From a executive that I couldn't stand, but wow. we had to talk. Being going to the airport. Yeah. And he taught me everything that I know. So being embarrassed actually helped me. Wow. And I learned birth on the earth what you are worth and stop giving away your purpose. Mm. And from that, I created a television network called XOD Network. XOD. Okay. And I've learned that we went from MySpace to Facebook, from Facebook to Twitter, from Twitter to Instagram, from Instagram to Snapchat, Snapchat to YouTube, from YouTube to LinkedIn, from LinkedIn to TikTok, and how much have you made? Mm. So saying that, I've learned to own the distribution and help people with their podcasts okay. or their own shows, their own channels, their own networks. Yeah. So if 100,000 people listen to you or watch you for $2, mm. you're making 200000 a month times 12. Wow. Yeah. And that's my backseat confession. I, I love it. Well, I am so grateful that you were able to, to take something that is a travesty where you, you were involved in so much creativity and not really reaping any long-term benefits and and figure that out that is absolutely uh, that's a wonderful success story and i i hope that 
someone out there hears this and makes the long move, right? Because that's that's always yes. the tough part is, you know, there's that old saying, do you want the short nickel or, or the long dime? And it is hard for many of us to figure out, all right, how do I slow down? How do I figure out what the long play is? But um, that's amazing. I'm yes. really, I'm really great. I'm, I guess I say I'm proud, but I'm also really grateful that you figured that out. Because just in talking to you the little bit you've been in my car, you are a very, very good dude. I, uh, you just, you just, I can tell you have a heart of gold. Appreciate and, you. Yeah, absolutely. And so you love to see it when the good guys win. Because, uh. you know, like, not unfortunately in business, it's the sharks to figure it out first. And then the good guys got to sit there and they, and they got to realize, like, man, we got to figure this out, too. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. So. Anyways, thanks, Dominic, for your story. Hope it inspires someone. Thank you, bro. Thank you, man. I think for all creatives, we're at this point in society, especially with technological advancements and how most consumers get their content, that it is difficult to know how to get paid for the work we do. Dominic is onto something with starting his own network that lets the artist retain rights to their work and keep the lion's share of the profits. We need this type of innovation in the creative space, for sure. I loved our riders today who challenged the misconceptions that some of us may have. From who is or who isn't a good lover to the inside workings of the strip club scene, I personally love when I get to learn about worlds that are just typically hidden from me. And I also love to find that there's not nearly the separation that I once imagined between myself and folks in a seemingly vastly different context than my own. But our final writer today has given us something to really chew on. To have had all of that seeming success and still end up broke is a lesson all in itself. I'm going to leave us with something Dominic said that just really hits home. Birth on the earth what you are worth and stop giving away your purpose. Peace, my friends. This is what happens when you are a rideshare driver in Atlanta and ask people for their stories. These weren't handpicked people with great stories. They just happened to get in my car and be gracious enough to share with all of us. And who knows, maybe someday you'll be in Atlanta and need to grab a rideshare and end up telling the rest of us the next great story on BCP. I'd actually encourage you to, every so often, just ask a stranger to share a story from their life. You never know what you might learn. I believe that our stories are powerful. They can make you laugh, cringe, cry, or even get you to think or feel differently. Our stories can truly make this world a little bit better place. So please, Subscribe, rate, and listen to this podcast and share it with as many adults as possible. It would mean so, so much to me. First and foremost, I want to thank the incredible writers who trusted me with your stories. You're my heroes. Thanks also to all the people in the background who have believed in this project slash dream. All of the music on this podcast was found on pixabay.com and it was free, which is an amazing gift when you're starting a podcast on a shoestring budget.